Hey everybody, George Crabb here. Hey, I'm super excited to let you know about these books that I've authored. Uh, I've got four of them. I got Road to Emmaus, Tola Shani, Joseph, and The Same Today. So these books are all available on Amazon.com or Apple iBooks or Barnes and Noble and other places. So, so this book, this first book that I wrote, uh, Road to Emmaus, this book came from a teaching that I did at a local Calvary Chapel, and it just took the notes, you know, and and uh, did a little more research, prayed about it, and just kept reading the Bible and and learning, and and it just uh, the notes kept expanding and expanding, and I thought, well, let's just make a book. Why not, right? And so this book has actually sold. Road to Emmaus has sold all over the world in just about every country. This has been my bestseller, and it takes you into Luke chapter twenty four. And, and I'm really excited about this because Luke 24, as you guys know, let me go back here, um, uh, as you guys know, is is a where Jesus was in disguise. So this is the resurrected Jesus. This was Sunday. This was the third day after Jesus was crucified. And we see Cleopas and another disciple, these two disciples, on their way home to Emmaus. It was about a seven-mile journey from Jerusalem. And Jesus comes up alongside them on the road, and they don't know who he is, so he's disguising himself. And he's like, why are you guys sad? Why are you so sad right now? And they're like, Didn't, did you not know, you know, that the, our Lord, who we thought was going to be the Messiah, Jesus, was crucified and killed? And then he said, didn't you read the scriptures, you guys? Basically, I'm paraphrasing right now, but he takes them through all of the Old Testament, the books of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, and he shows where he's found in all of these Old Testament scriptures. So you're going to see him, you're going to see Jesus in the book of Genesis, in, in Genesis chapter 22, where we see Abraham and Isaac going up the very mountain that would be later the mountain uh, where Calvary was, where Jesus was crucified, and you see a father and a son, and you see him going up the mountain with wood on his back, and he was laid upon the wood on his back on top of the mountain, and then a ram came who was caught in the thicket by his, its horns, uh, the substitution, right? Well, then later in Genesis, you're going to see Joseph's story. So Joseph, a huge type and picture of Jesus Christ. He was the father's most favored son. He was rejected by his own, his own, the 12 tribes of Israel, his brothers, right? And they sold him for silver, right? Remember Judah sold Jesus for silver? And then they hand him over to the Gentiles. And the captain of the Gentile guard throws him into the place of the condemned because he was falsely accused. Joseph was falsely accused. Jesus was falsely accused. And then he's in this place of the condemned. And it was there that he tells two, these two were that were in the place of condemned with him, the baker and the the um, uh, the cupbearer, and he tells them their fate. The cupbearer was to be restored to the king in three days. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, there was a man to his right and to his left, and one of them repented. Remember he he said, "We are sinners; we deserve what we're getting." And then he turns his eyes to Jesus, and he said, "Lord," he called him Lord, and he said, "Remember me in your kingdom." And he was saved. Jesus said, "You today I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. So that's we see that in Joseph's story. And then Joseph later, he was raised up out of this place of the condemned. And he was brought before the throne. And only he was found worthy, only Joseph, to reveal those dreams that Pharaoh had. To reveal the, this future time period that was coming. A time split in half. A time of great harvest. And then a time of great famine a time of trouble over the whole face of the earth. See the picture there. And then his brothers, the 12 tribes of Israel, his brothers come back to him and they are saved. So this is a, Joseph's life was a clear picture of what Jesus' life is like and what his plan is, what God's plan is for the future. So you're going to see a lot of that in this book, in Road to Emmaus. You're going to see him in, in Isaiah 53, of course. We know that's a huge picture of Jesus Christ in there, in that, that prophetic book. Also in the book of Jonah, another prophetic book, where you're going to see a lot of, of Jesus Christ in that story of Jonah. And then we're going to go into Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is a powerful, powerful picture of Jesus Christ, right? It was actually a prophecy that David had 1,000 years before Jesus was even born in Bethlehem. And 
It was as if David was looking through Jesus's eyes when he was on the cross. It's just extremely powerful. So this book covers that and much more. So this is a great little book. It's about 158 pages and uh, just takes you through the Old Testament, through the book of Genesis, the, or actually the first uh, five books, the books of Moses, and then the prophets, and then the Psalms. And that's the order that Jesus taught it to them. That was the order the Jewish people uh, taught through in, in those days. So Road to Emmaus, available on Amazon. Like I said, that... Um, uh, you can get these books, all of them. You can get them at Amazon Books for the hard copies, you know, for the paperback copies. And none of them are over $15. They're they're real reasonably priced. And then you can also get the ebook version, which is much cheaper, the Kindle book. Or you can go to Apple iBooks. You can get it there, the electronic version as well, or uh, Barnes & Noble as well. So, all right, you guys. So, Road to Emmaus. Now, the next book I'm going to talk about is Tolashani. That is the Hebrew word Tolashani for scarlet worm or crimson worm. Now, this this book was it's based on Psalm 22, right? And then it zeroes in on that one scripture. We know all of Psalm 22 is a huge picture of Jesus on the cross. I mean, they cast lots for my clothing. They pierced my hands and my feet. And we just see what all, it's a, it's a prophecy that David had 1,000 years before he was born, before Jesus was born, of the cross, of Jesus, the Messiah, on the cross. So Tola Shani, the scarlet worm or the crimson worm, was actually a little grub. It's this little grub and they they would take these tola grubs and that is the word in verse 6 of psalm 22 it's i am a worm and no man have you ever read that and wondered what is that all about well it's actually i am a tola or tola shani and no man well this little grub climbs up a tree one time in its life to give birth to its offspring to, 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 to birth them, and then it dies on that tree. And it leaves a red crimson stain on that tree when it dies, because it literally bursts forth after it sticks itself to the tree or a piece of wood that it climbs up, and then it it turns crimson red or blood red, that, and it stains that tree. It bursts open and stains that tree. And then three days later, three days later, guys, it turns as white as snow and actually falls to the ground like a snowflake, which brings us to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, where the Lord says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be as crimson, or the word is tola, or tola shani, they shall be as white as wool. And that wool was lamb's wool, the real pure white, like snow white wool. And so this book will go into that in great detail. It'll talk about the history of this and also that they used this tola for the dye, for the priestly garments, and for the veil of the temple.